Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss how the blood glucose is estimated. And in this video we are going to discuss the one of the method GOD POD method. When we take the diet, the diet is having the carbohydrates and these carbohydrates can be split to release the glucose. This glucose is going to be entering into the systemic circulation. So this glucose can release the energy in the form of ATP when it's undergoing the glycolysis. Otherwise, this glucose can also be stored in the body as a glycogen. So glucose is an essential component for our physiological system in order to produce all the cellular activities. When these glucose levels are in between the 70 to 140 mg per deciliter after a meal, it indicates a normal condition. But when they are abnormally increased above 200 mg per dl after a meal, it indicates a diabetic condition. And even the glucose is an essential component, it should be strictly controlled within the limits in order to prevent the diabetic conditions. Now let's see what are the glucose levels, optimal and abnormal levels. Glucose levels can be represented with the units uh, mg per deciliter. Sometimes they can also be represented as millimoles per liter. But milligram per deciliter is one of the widely used expression for the glucose levels. According to the glucose levels, the health condition of the patient can be classified into three categories, normal, pre-diabetic as well as diabetic. Glucose can be estimated at different times and one of the widely used methods is the FBG, the fasting plasma glucose levels. This is also commonly known as FBS, fasting blood sugar. Under fasting conditions, if the glucose levels are less than 100 mg per dl, then it is called as normal level. So for a normal blood glucose levels, the FPG value should be around 70 to 100 mg per dl. And if the blood glucose levels are going to be increased from 100 to 125, that is 101 to 125, the patient is pre-diabetic. And if they are greater than 125, the patient is diabetic. Similarly, we can also estimate the glucose levels after the meal. So this would this is what we call the postprandial glucose levels. After a meal, the glucose levels will be highly increased. So postprandial glucose limits will be somewhat more compared with the FPG. In a normal condition, the level should be 70 to 140 mg per dl. And when their levels are going to be increased from 141 to 200, that is below 200, they can be called as pre-diabetic. But when they are abnormally increased above 200, it indicates the diabetic condition. For a normal level, the FPG value should be less than 100 and postprandial glucose level should be less than 140. Now let us see how this blood glucose is going to be estimated. The glucose can be estimated by collection of the blood. This blood can be collected. We can estimate the glucose within the plasma as well as in the serum. But most of the times we can prefer the serum samples because within the serum, the hydrols of the glucose will be somewhat less. So this blood sample can undergo the centrifugation. When it's undergoing the centrifugation, it separates the serum. The supernatant liquid is nothing but the serum which can be separated and can be used for the estimation of the glucose. Now the serum is going to be separated and to this serum, we are going to add the glucose monoreagent. This glucose monoreagent involves the enzyme preparations like the GOD as well as POD and along with it is going to involve the 4-amino antipyrin as well as phenol along with few of the buffers. All these are going to be involved in a single reagent and we are going to add around 1 ml of the reagent to the sample. When this reagent is going to be added to the sample, the, re uh, the reaction can take place between the glucose molecules present in the serum and the glucose monoreagent. But in order to complete the reaction as well as to increase the rate of the reaction, we can put the sample in the incubation. We can maintain the temperature around 37 degrees centigrade for 5 minutes or 25 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes. Then when the sample is undergoing the incubation, it produces a colored product which is having the pink color. This pink color is because of the formation of the product quinone imine. Now this product can be estimated directly by using a spectrophotometer or simply colorimeter. And then we can measure the absorbance of the sample which is directly related to the concentration of the glucose present in the serum. Now this sample is going to be placed in the spectrophotometer and we are going to irradiate with a source. So which type of wavelength of radiation we can use? Because this colored product can show an absorption from 5 naught 5 to the 550 nanometer. 
we can use the radiation in between this wavelength and when we irradiate this uh, sample with this wavelength of radiation the light can pass through the samples suppose we are sending the intensity of the light with i naught then it comes with a light of intensity it the transmitted light which can be detected by a suitable detector so we can use a simple colorimeter in order to estimate the absorbance of this colored product and in order to remove the errors we have to conduct the experiment with a blank preparation as well as a standard preparation so standard is required in order to compare the absorption of the glucose within the sample such that we can eliminate the errors so we can estimate the absorbance of the blank which is not having any glucose and as well as uh, a standard sample then we can uh, calculate the glucose present in the sample so concentration of the glucose present in the sample which is expressed as milligram per deciliter is equal to the absorbance of the sample by the absorbance of the standard into 100 so here this calculation is going to be automated which which can be displayed in the instrument and a blank determination can give a correction factor if any such that we are going to get the exact glucose levels present in the serum so this is the GOD POD method which is a highly sensitive method where we are not directly estimating the glucose but glucose can be converted into gluconic acid where the hydrogen peroxide is going to produce this hydrogen peroxide can be utilized to oxidize the glucose reagent which is made up of 4 amino antipyrin as well as phenol so when this hydrogen peroxide react with these two reagents it produces a condenser product which is having the more intensity of absorption and it produces a colored product with pink color the absorption of this colored product is directly proportional to the concentration of the glucose present in the sample so that's about the estimation of the glucose within the blood by god pod method if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video